This video is on topic E.5 titled Fusion and Stars. If you'd like a free PDF of this worksheet, then please read the description below. Please do comment, like, share, and subscribe. Here are the understandings. If you understand each one, put a check mark next to it. Whatever you don't, don't put a check mark next to it. Review it until you do understand it. Question one, define nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is when two or more atomic nuclei collide at very high energy and fuse together into a new nucleus. The binding energy per nucleon of the new nucleus is more stable than the original two nuclei. Temperatures of greater than 10,000 Kelvin is required. So from the last video I told you, nuclear fission occurs when we're to the right of iron like the heavier elements. Nuclear fusion occurs when we're to the left of iron, where we have lighter of elements. Question two, two, give two examples of nuclear fusion. Once again, please do go to this website, nuclearpower.com. It's pretty well organized. We got Hydrogen plus hydrogen becoming helium plus a neutron plus energy. We also have hydrogen plus helium becoming helium plus hydrogen plus energy. Question three, define celestial. That's relating to the sky. Question four, define star, a celestial body that generates light and other radiant energy and consists of a mass of gas held together by its own gravity in which the energy generated by nuclear reactions in the interior is balanced by the outflow of energy to the surface and the inward directed gravitational forces are balanced by the outward directed gas and radiation pressures. So the sun is a star. I'll get into more detail of what I just said for question number four. Question five, define thermal gas pressure. Gas pressure, this is the outwards pressure created by the contraction of the mass in the star. Question six, define radiation pressure. This is the outwards pressure created by emitted radiation of the star. Question seven, define gravitational pressure. This is the inwards pressure of the star. Question eight, define stellar equilibrium. When the thermal gas pressure and radiation pressure is equal to the gravitational pressure, the star remains the same size as stable and unchanging. So the pressure out equals the pressure in. Question nine, define main sequence star. When a star is in stellar equilibrium, that's the main sequence star. These stars fuse hydrogen atoms to form helium atoms. About 90% of the stars in the universe are main sequence stars. They are the most numerous true stars of the universe. Question 10, define sun, that's our closest star. Question six, describe the proton-proton cycle. So please do memorize this. Write it down 10 times if you have to. This is a three-step cycle. This is a three-step cycle for fusion in a star. You have hydrogen plus hydrogen makes heavy hydrogen, deuterium. Then you have deuterium plus hydrogen makes helium. And then you have helium plus helium making helium plus two hydrogens. And then it's a cycle. Those two hydrogens from step three become the two hydrogens from step one. So maybe drawing this will help you better understand what's happening. Question 12, define apparent brightness units. Apparent brightness is the intensity, which is power per unit area received perpendicular to the direction of propagation at Earth. The apparent brightness B has units of watts per meter squared. 
Remember, intensity in topic B and C is power per unit area. Intensity in topic E.2 is number of photons per second. Question 13, define luminosity L units. That's the total power a star radiates in the form of electromagnetic waves. Luminosity has units of watts. Question 14, define a perfect black body. It's a perfect absorber of energy, emits maximum possible radiation. Perfect black body does not have to be black. All stars like the sun are black bodies. Has an emissivity of one and an albedo of zero. So remember this image from topic B. Question 15, describe Wien's displacement law. Remember, lambda max times temperature is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters times Kelvin. That's not millikelvin, that's meters times Kelvin. This equation tells us that as the temperature of a black body increases, then the maximum wavelength emitted decreases. And the maximum frequency, therefore, increases, because V equals lambda F. So this is for one object. As you continue to increase the temperature of this black body, the maximum wavelength decreases, the maximum wavelength emitted from this black body. Question 16, describe the absorption spectrum. So this is from topic E.1. We can use absorption spectrum to determine which elements a star is made of. Energy goes through a sample of gas. A specific amount of energy will be absorbed by electrons in the atom, and then the electron will go to a higher energy level. The electron will then return to its lower energy level. To conserve energy, the lost energy will be emitted as a photon in a random direction. The vertical black bars in an absorption spectrum image is a specific energy or wavelengths absorbed by the sample. So a continuous spectrum is what we see at the top. Both the absorption spectrum and emission spectrum tell us what elements an object is made of. Question 17, describe main sequence stars. These are the most common stars. They fuse hydrogen to helium. About 90% of the known stars are main sequence stars. The sun is a main sequence star. Question 18, describe the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. This is a diagram which categorizes the stars by luminosity and temperature. Temperature increases to the left. Both the luminosity and temperature axis are usually logarithmic. So you need time to play with this and to look at examples. Because you could see it's logarithmic on the vertical and horizontal. And that's something you probably don't have much experience with. Question 19, describe the instability strip. These are stars listed in the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which are not in stellar equilibrium. The outward thermal gas pressure and outward radiation pressure is not equal to the inward gravitational pressure. These stars are increasing and decreasing their volume. So the instability strip is not in this image, but you could go online and you could type in Hertzsprung-Russell diagram on your favorite search engine, and you could see many images of this diagram and you could find the instability strip. To find a red giant, a very large cool reddish star with great luminosity. These stars have a hotter core but a larger and cooler surface. The amount of hydrogen available for fusion at the center of the star is less and the gravitational pressure inwards is greater than the outwards thermal and radiation pressure. Most stars become red giants or red supergiants at the end of their time on the main sequence. They have expanded considerably from their original volume.
Question 21. Define a red supergiant. This is a very large red giant. Define a dwarf star, the core of the red giant star which remains after planetary nebulae. Question 23. Define electron degeneracy pressure. Electrons act like a gas to prevent a star from collapsing further so it can remain stable for a long time. Question 13. Define a white dwarf. This is the end result of the explosion of a red giant. This is after electron degeneracy pressure. It is a small and dense star in which no nuclear reactions take place. It is very hot, but its small size gives low luminosity. So the process is a main sequence star, then a red giant star, then a white dwarf. Question 25. Describe what happens after a supernova. A supernova is an explosion of a red supergiant in which a neutron star or black hole is created. Question 26. Describe the term evolutionary path. A luminosity versus temperature graph which shows a main sequence star expanding to a red giant and changing over time. So you could see a main sequence star starts from that dot, then it becomes a red giant or a red supergiant, and then it becomes a white dwarf. The horizontal axis is important. You could see the temperature of the black curve. It's pretty much the same, and then it increases, and then it decreases. And you could see the main sequence star in red, it becomes a red supergiant, and then it goes supernova. That, in that case, the temperature decreases. You could see the red is for a large star, the black curve is for a smaller star. Question 27. Describe the equation L is proportional to m to the 3.5. For a main sequence star, its luminosity is proportional to 3.5 times its mass. It's an approximate and generalized equation. Question 26. Define astronomical unit. This is the mean distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Question 29. Define light year. This is the total distance an electromagnetic wave like light travels in a vacuum in one year. Question 30. Define stellar parallax. This is determining the distance from stars by observing their motion compared to a stationary star, which is further away in the background. Question 31. Define parallax angle. The parallax angle is the angle between the Earth at one time of year and the Earth six months later. Question 32, define arc second. One degree is 1,000, sorry, one degree is 3,600 arc seconds. Question 33, define parsec. The distance to a star that has a parallax angle of one arc second. One parsec is 3.26 light years. Question 34, describe the equation D in units of parsec equals one divided by P in units of arc second. So P is a parallax angle measured in arc seconds, and D is a distance measured in parsecs. Question 35. An example of a fusion reaction is when deuterium and tritium combine to create helium and neutron and energy. Determine A, the energy released from this reaction, and B, the change in mass from this reaction. So you could pause the video and check this out. Question 36. The temperature of a main sequence star is about 2.5 times 10 to the 4 Kelvin. Part A, determine the peak wavelength of this main sequence star. So we're going to use the equation Lambda max T equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters Kelvin. And solve for lambda. 
Part B, determine an approximate value of the luminosity of this main sequence star. So we got to take a look at this graph. And luminosity here, remember, we were given that the temperature is 25,000 Kelvin. So the luminosity here is about 9,000. And this is the solution we get. Part C, determine an approximate value for its radius. So remember from topic B, L equals sigma A T to the fourth. And A is 4 pi R squared. And just solve for R. Question 20, the surface temperature of a main sequence star is approximately 1 times 10 to the 4 K. Part A, use a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram to estimate the luminosity of the star. We got something just under 100, right? So I just assumed that it was 90. So that's your answer for part A. Part B, the apparent brightness is approximately 1.6 times 10 to the minus 9 watts over meters squared. Determine the approximate distance between this main sequence star and Earth. We're going to use B equals L over 4 pi D squared and solve for D. Question 38. The parallax angle to a star is 0 0.320 arc seconds. Determine the distance in meters to the star. So we just use the equation. Question 39, the parallax angle for Betelgeuse is approximately 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3 arc seconds. Determine the distance of Betelgeuse from Earth in parsecs, meters, light years, and astronomical units. So take a look at parts A, B, and C. And take a look at part D. Once again, please go online, go to your favorite search engine, type in the learning pyramid, take a look at those images. You'll understand that you really know this topic when you could discuss with others, do as many problems as you can and teach others.